Hello my friends, Wiggle here. Today I'm working in the tomato and pepper patch. This is the stuff that was stayed way too long in the greenhouse, came out really late. And I put it in a bad time of year. It was already getting pretty hot and it's been really dry. So I wanna show, uh, share a few um, strategies with you. Uh, this is an important video I think if you're trying to look for a sustainable way to garden, uh, raise crops and so forth, you probably ought to consider some of this. Uh, your mileage may vary. So what uh, what has happened is uh, this has not been weeded or tended to whatsoever. I intended to get some uh, straw down hay down to kind of help with the weeds. Never happened. So this uh, mostly spiny amaranth here. This stuff's terrible depending on how you look at it. So, what I'm trying to suggest here is free fertilizer, free mulch, mulch not only to hold in moisture but to control weeds, again, and free nitrogen. So this is a, a, this stuff's gone a little too long. You can see the seed heads on here. It's getting ready. You do not want to let amaranth go to seed, especially this spiny amaranth. They're not quite developed yet, so I'm getting out here just in time. This stuff really came up quickly, so you can see it as a, such a, a lot of work and a real pain and all that. But it's also, in place, it's fertilizer. So to handle this in a low-tech, sustainable way, ah, I forgot to mention, Anyway, low-tech, low sustainable way is a person and a shovel. Very little equipment. It's good. You get exercise and you get out here. And I forgot the number one thing we're doing here is building soil. Building soil in a sustainable way. When you start having a spiny amaranth, it's a good thing because it's showing you that your fertility is up from where it was rather than broom sedge, the worst. Fertility is up and moisture is up. Now, amaranth will grow, spiny amaranth will grow in a dry spot, but it doesn't prosper. So this stuff's looking good. It's very lush. Uh, is this in the shot here? You've got these um, nice green stalks, tender. They haven't really got too fibrous yet. So the method here is to just aim at the base. And I'm just folding this stuff back over out of my area that I want to grow in where my crops are. So I do have tomatoes in there. They are not doing great, but they have had no care whatsoever. So part of the strategy of this tall weeds is not only the free fertilizer and the soil building, the free mulch, well, it is a soil builder. That's what's important. It's the sustainable way to have your input. So what I'm not doing is going to the store, buying their low-value mulch or chemical fertilizers, and I'm so I'm not transporting. I'm not spending money on it. I'm not supporting the system I'm doing something completely different so I can view these weeds as not a problem but a solution yes you have to get some work done you have to come out here but this is basically chop and drop and different plants are going to need different strategy if if it was all grass if it was all Bermuda or something, this isn't going to work. You're not going to get much of your effort. However, let me see this. Oh, yeah, I was saying part of the strategy also. Um, we, we're, 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 we're uh, I think, the first of August or somewhere near the first of August. This is a Sunday, the first Sunday in August 22 or whatever close to so here's what I've done behind 
So you can see, I have mulched the path with all these high nitrogen plant, high nutrient density. This stuff is never going to burn. It's never going to run off. It's never going to cause a problem. And piling it up, not only mulches, but it helps with the composting of the actual material. If it's spread out too thin, it kind of just dries up and oxidizes. If you can have it in a pile, just even a little bit of a pile, it's going to slow down oxidation and help retain more of that in the soil. It's just good to not let it dry out too fast. You'd rather it start rotting and dropping some stuff rather than just going up and, and smoke, so to speak. So these untended tomatoes have made it through July, and July has been brutal here. Very little rain, pretty hot, high humidity, but the grass, it got crispy. That's how I know we had a rough July is you got crispy grass, not green grass. Now the rain is coming. We're doing a little better. So now these are going to be really late tomatoes. Everybody's like, got to get them in June. Got to get them in July. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have tomatoes into October, and it's later. But the press pressure is going to be a little less. I'm not going to have to do all of that maintenance of, of watering and trying to carry them through the heat. These tall weeds... Helped hold that stuff through the heat. And these, these tomatoes have just had trouble all along. They were legging it too far along. They were already in flower when we put them out and they were real stringy. So I planted them horizontally. We lost a lot. The peppers have come around pretty decently. You can see these have been buried back in the, uh, back underneath all that. But see, we're still getting stuff. So, it's working. They're, they're, they're in there. You can't see them, but they're in there. So, uh, I'm getting rained out. I tried to get this in here. But what I was trying to say is just make your fertilizer compost soil in place without going to the store. And this is sustainable. You can do this year after year after year after year. So, view it as a resource instead of a uh, just a big hassle and a lot of work it, there's a lot of value in weeds and if i can chop it and keep them from growing the root ball that's in there going down if we can choke that thing out and it dies it's providing that much more air water and nutrients it's, as it decomposes it's loosening my soil bringing in fertility giving all the worms something to eat because as soon as you mulch this down, the worms are coming up and they're going to love it. So, there are uh, better ways. You can use a weed eater, you can use a lawnmower or whatever. I like a shovel. It's just super easy. Not going to work on everything. For instance, this Bermuda, I will weed eat that. So I'm going to chop this row. I'm going to fold all my tomatoes over, weed eat, and then I'm going to fold my tomatoes back. I'm going to attach them to this fence. And over here, since only a few tomatoes made it, I'll either stake them individually or I might run a row of cattle panels and just tie them up to that. So, that, my friends, is the end of this story. So, I just want to say, wiggle out. <laughs>